Hi again, welcome to the Garage on Pierre. This time, you know, there's a day you're fed up of uh, being disorganized and uh, you say, okay, I'm doing something about it. And there's a big difference between saying that and say, okay, today uh, I've started doing something about it. I uh, had maybe, I don't know, hundreds of collets and uh, they were all uh, not exactly well organized and it gets frustrating when you get to look for the right one and uh, they're never in the right order, or they're never in the right place. Or so let's, let's make a collet rack. That's going to make it much better. That's going to ease up my life and uh, maybe it's an interesting project that uh, maybe some, some of you could uh, pick up ideas. Let's just uh, get working. Okay, there comes a time where a guy has got to do what he's got to do. You know, this is 5C collets. These are uh, 3H. You got about uh, 60 something. You know, this is the, uh, the first, uh, the first 30 percent is there. The rest is over there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. TJ100, TJ100, clamping sets. I got even more, but uh, this is the before. It's got to be better than that. Uh, after a few trials and error for this type of uh, TJ100 collets, made a hole in this kind of a square tubing. And uh, it's a test piece. If it's just loose enough so it's not going to catch in there. So I got about uh, maybe 60 holes that side to make. They're like 34 millimeters. And these hole saws are uh, going to do the job. I'm measuring all the uh, long pieces, like 30, 32 inches long. I got 20, 20 holes on the each, each bar. And that's going to make me uh, 20 of those collets. I got about 40 something of those, but uh, I can make different different type of holes and I'll be doing uh, different types of, of collets. The C5 in there, smaller hole, the H3, uh, same thing in there, smaller holes, but I got I got more bars, so like, uh, and they'll all be installed with some kind of an angle like this on the uh, on the rack stacked up to, together. And it's gonna give me a nice uh, nice storage, like the uh, facing up the, the hole and everything. That'd be, I think that should be pretty nice tedious work a little bit but uh, anyway better than always digging for the collets in the bottom of uh, nowhere I'll show you the place after almost done this is where it's fun uh, having a Randy's crab like the energizer, energizer bunny last and last and last and last <laughs> thanks Randy this is where a hand punch comes in it's going to be hand drill on the uh, drill press so it's an automatic punch. That's a quick, quick and dirty job. A bit of oil. Not the most stable holes in the world, but it's what we got. Finding the center hole. Uh, this is something I kind of knew from the start, but uh, kind of didn't want to resolve to it. Good stable machine. 300 IPMs. This is going so much better. Big difference. Just roughly lining it, lining it up, tying up. Wow, I think I like this. Why didn't I do that first? Okay, those are uh, ER40 collets. If I put them in the holes, like just as I uh, make them, firstly with the uh, with this core bit, it doesn't go very far. So I need them to go at least to the diameter of the hole there, and sit down snugly in the bottom there. So this is how it uh, sh should be going. Um, 
I could I could bore with this much deeper. Like I will I was I was a I will be doing with the let's say the end mill there. It's a one and a half inch end mill. It's been resharpened. It's got a few thousands left. But uh, if you try to use the sides of those uh, core bits to kind of dig down and make a hole and just open up a bore. You're gonna, you're gonna make them. Uh, you know, you're gonna damage them. It's not, they're not meant for that. So um, I'll be using this recentering. Pretty simple. I'm just. Uh, I wasn't gonna change every time. So I'm going down with the the quill here, making this uh, sit down in the bottom of the vise solidly, tying it up, and uh, going about 200 RPMs. And. There we go. Slowly going down. Controlling the depth as I go. And that should be fine to get my collet right down the, uh, the seat there. This is also a case where if you got an end mill made of carbide, I suggest you don't use it. Because this is pretty, uh, pretty badly interrupted cut and you might just run into trouble with that. I noticed that I switched to a step drill because of a technical reasons. One hole. This is doing a pretty good job also. Just be careful you don't start daydreaming and you go past your, uh, past your step because it's hard to add metal, metal back to the uh, Just uh, use the next step just to make a very light chamfer there to uh, go for next step. There's a little uh, center punch mark. I'm going to put the tip of the drill there, right there. When the drill centers itself, you're going to feel a little wiggle. Make sure that uh, thing's setting down good. Here it's grabbing. I'm holding the uh, the bar and tightening the vise. Let's go. The steel is about uh, 1 16 deep, about uh, one and a half millimeter. Yeah, even the most glorious jobs aren't complete till the uh, cleanup's done. When I used the <coughs> core bit here to make the uh, holes in the uh, in those uh, tubings, I find the uh, let's say the uh, burr in the back is very heavy. I was trying to try to take it out with the uh, deburring tool, but uh, I mean that was uh, just almost impossible to do. So my uh, favorite second way to do it is uh, to use a die grinder like this here and kind of a, not exactly the most uh, orthodox method of doing something, but uh, use the back of the wheel here. Just get it in there, go around and clean up the, uh, clean up the burn itself. And just for last little uh, reminders, like the, the burring tool would do the, uh, the, the finishing, you know, the light finishing touch it needed on the end. The way to do this is to um, get the wheel inside, watch you don't touch the ends and make sure you're, uh, your bar is uh, solidly held on the table though. Get in there. Get underneath. Go around the hole. And... Patiently go all the... Uh, then after this, if the burr gets much thinner if there's any left, much easier to go with the uh, deburring tool and remove what's what whatever whatever can be left. Yeah, you need to be patient. And deburring tools, be careful if they slip. Sometimes they can do nasty jobs in your body parts. Okay, let's hope these ones go smooth too. I'm installing those um, bars at uh, 60 60 degree angles, and just want to check something here. 
and if they're stuck here that's not a problem 60 degrees is good just want to make sure that stays in place and goes right let's tack the corner there you better make the, make the tack pretty uh pretty good tack otherwise I mean uh, everything will dismount if you don't uh, if you don't do this right the first time so and so on the other ones are going to be uh, quite easy these ones are uh were a little bit more complicated because the er40 are a little bit wider than the uh than the tracks themselves so they needed a little bit of uh, extra space in between to be able to come in and out. See, this is going to be excellent. The TJ100. And I'm going to be having some uh, ER 5C collets and uh, H3s. I made a little bit of room on that table because nothing gets me aggravated like uh, not being able to move or something. Everything falls when I touch anything. Uh, Someday I'll get organized, hopefully. Here that uh, special crayon with silver uh, silver lead in there. That's pretty good though. So two and a half. Well, the first one easy to weld the other ones after okay let's make this one first and after that that's going to be pretty easy to space out the other ones to the right uh, area I'm matching the two sides that's not gonna be too bad there we go There was a gap, but there's no more gap. There's a way when you weld to uh, fill out gaps. Not very hard, but... Uh... Okay, last one, 17. If I put the first one, second one, which are already spaced, and the last one, the other one should be pretty well spaced. There you go. There you go, another bridge gapped. This one needs a spacing here. Those those two are spaced. Those two will be spaced and the other, the other ones are pretty well stuck together. Okay, let's do a little bit of spacing out here. There we go. Not harder than... No harder than this. There we go. You know what? This is freaking hottest. Tabarnak. Jeez, I hate that. I hate doing this. I hate doing this. And I hate doing this. I guess you know now what's going in. Okay, normally you do the welds as hard as, as, hard as you can. Now, if some of you have tempted to uh, add some uh, more welds in there, refrain from it. If you put too much, you warp. If you warp, you don't, you don't get anywhere. And the problem is, uh, make it solid enough to withstand the task, but you don't need to make it uh, 150 times more solid. That's it. That seems to be going pretty good. Oh. Where this is going, it's going in some kind of a tabletop. <clears throat> and it's 32 inches and a half between the uh, uh, spacing in between those two uh, railings there there you go if you see better 82 but 82 and a half uh, centimeters about I'll leave it uh, about an eight uh, an eight of an inch extra just to uh, allow for uh, you know fooling around just in case when I say tacking I mean tacking Okay, so I'm reinforcing there. Uh, this is how it looks like. Oops. Because if you try to have this uh, hole by two tacks there, 
Might hold. Might fall. So I'm not taking any chance. I don't like the I don't like the gap there's there. So here you go. Quick way to uh, use an adjustable wrench. These things are good for just about anything. <laughs> now with a black uh, coat of paint, I think it looks pretty good. I can even add a few more on top. It's easy to uh, just insert them on top and stack them up. Still got room for maybe three, uh, three other uh, rows. So let's uh, let it dry and let's go install that tomorrow. Okay, that's... Uh, well, I mean, I can't be can't be any happier in this. But yeah, some other things, but this for this part, it's a, it's a good change. Yeah, I'm getting organized finally after all those years. Yeah. That's it. That's uh, how, how can I say? Going going to the next project comes a, comes to a point where the guy gets to do what he's got to do. So give it all to your best friend. Shut up. <laughs> Not talking to you. <laughs> You're ha happy. Happy about it. Well, I mean, pe people hit print screen. Okay, right now because it's as clean as it's ever gonna be. Okay, but just. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I know. You're a nice guy. Yeah, yeah I know. Shut up. Yeah, yeah you help. <laughs> you help me a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, for that little bit, I'll be nice to you. Oh, looks looks like it's gonna make a nice rack. And no, there's no special size uh, given to it. The ladies won't like that. <laughs> <laughs>